Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be episode six for my Citadel building series. This episode is mainly going to focus on the climb or ascent section of the mock. I made a lot of progress there and I'm sure you guys are excited to see that. It's been a little bit since the last video, but this is going to be a longer video with more progress packed in. So I hope that kind of makes up for it. And before we get into today's video, I do want to give a special shout out or thank you to number one, my friend Daniel or Daniel Ross Lego, and number two, my friend Jay or Rich Boy Jay. Over the past few weeks, I've been setting up a Patreon as well as channel memberships to make videos and mocks and content for you guys. And to be able to do that as a full-time job is my ultimate dream. So I set up a Patreon as well as the channel memberships. The Patreon is a $5 tier with basically everything behind the scenes. And then the YouTube, there's three different tiers, each with different perks. Those are more for a YouTube centric person. So I'll have a link to my Patreon in the description and right next to the subscribe button is the join button for my channel. So go ahead and check those out. See if that's something that interests you. If not, that's totally fine. I don't expect anything from any of you, but if that is something you're interested in, check the links down below. And the last thing I wanna say before we start the video is a huge special thank you to Light My Bricks for sponsoring the series. They have sent me some products over to use and that has definitely helped me out greatly. So I'm very thankful to them for sponsoring the series. If you guys don't know what Light My Bricks is, it's a company that specializes in building light kits for your Lego sets, but they also have a DIY range, which is what I use for my mocks. They are just the individual pieces. You can just do whatever you want, make up your own designs and use them in mocks like I and many other people do. So a huge thank you to Light My Bricks and now with all that stuff being said, make sure to like and subscribe so you guys don't miss out on anything related to the Citadel or any other videos that I post here on the channel. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so jumping right in, as you can see, I have extended out the wall even farther. I am very close to the end of the base plate. As you can see, if I bring the camera over, I am like maybe 10 to 12 studs left to go here at the bottom. And then at the top, I just have to extend it all the way out. But the reason that I haven't completely finished this is because this is where I want to have the ascent or climb section with all of the electro mines and ultimately where they enter the base from. So I've left this area until now to start working on, but everything else has been completed as you can see all the way down to the end. I will eventually tackle the top of this, but I'm going to leave that for now. I just wanna get the full front facade done of the mountain. And the last thing I have left on that is the ascent. So what I've been working on now currently is just figuring out the lighting for this because basically the way that I'm doing it is I'm going to have some of those electro mines going all the way up and I wanna have some Sith lightning pieces illuminated kind of acting as the electricity jumping between the mines. So I wanted to have them all be flickering like electricity would be. So basically what I did is I took one of the flicker effects boards back here that I've been using for the lighting and the lava and I ported that into an expansion board. So now I have like four or five extra cables all ran off of the same flicker effects board. And then in the center of the electro mines, there's a green light or a red one if it gets detonated. So I'm going to have all the green lights and the one red light static. So these are just going to come off of a normal expansion board straight out of the battery box. I'm not gonna have to worry about that. But I just was trying to figure this out and I think I've got it right now. So at this point, I'm going to work on extending over the wall and making sure that there's holes and pass throughs so that the light can pass through where I need it to. And I'm just really excited to see how this is all gonna pan out. So that's all the stuff that I've been kind of working with and thinking about. All right, so I've made a lot more progress and it was a little bit more complicated than I was hoping. The first thing that I tried out just did not work at all, but I have made a breakthrough in terms of the lighting. So as you can see, I have the mine, which is basically just a bunch of those two by two round tiles. So it stands out from the rest of the dark bluish gray. And then there is a three by three dish. This was the most challenging part. And as you can see with the grill plates, I was trying to figure out a way to have the light wires string through. So I just grabbed those at first and I thought that that was going to be the easiest way to do it just because of how many you know available options there are in terms of where I can string wires. 
And in the end, it actually worked out really well. So I'll go ahead and flip on the switch, which is also why I have the camera so dim and show you guys what it looks like. So the first thing you'll probably notice is, of course, it's flashing, which I'm so excited about. It looks exactly the way that I had envisioned it. Although the one thing I do want to change is right now I have trans dark blue plates in front of the lights, which kind of diffuse it because before I was just using the white lights just shining straight through and it was way too bright. So I do like this, although in the show it is very clearly purple. So I'm going to look into getting some trans purple tiles. And then the other thing is I do have a green dot in the center of this one. I really like how that looks and basically it is just a static light. And so basically my plan going forward is I'm going to do another one of these kind of over here. This is probably going to be the one that Charger unfortunately falls into and gets electrocuted to death. So this one is going to have a red central beam instead of the green, and then it will kind of just zigzag all the way up to the door eventually. This took me probably around an hour to figure out, but now that I have kind of the general idea, it should go pretty fast from here on out. But for now, I am very, very happy with how this looks. All right, so I've made a lot more progress, and now there are four mines set up. The top two don't have any electricity going to them yet, but I wanted to stop here just to show you guys what Charger's death is going to look like. As you can see, I have a clone trooper placed kind of falling down in front of this mine, and I have some of the electricity just coming up and surrounding him. So this is something that I've been working on for the past few hours, and I'm very, very happy with it. So I'll go ahead and turn on the lights, and you guys can kind of see what that's going to look like in its final state. I am so proud of this. This is really something special. I've never seen anything like this really done before, and I'm just very, very excited about it. Right now, I'm just using a plain clone trooper with blue arms and a lieutenant helmet. I do plan on getting CAC helmets in the future, but for now, this is what I'm using as a stand-in, and I gotta say, I'm really happy with it. As you can kind of see beneath him, the central dot is red. The other ones are going to be green, as I mentioned before. Basically, right now, the only thing left is obviously to extend this up higher and then go through and add in more of the rock texturing because right now this is just a flat wall with some tiles and plates. So I'll go through, add in more of these rocks, kind of cutting through in between the mines and stuff. But for now, I'm so happy with this. So the first thing that I want to break down is the underside of the platform and support. So basically what I did was a bunch of weird angles techniques and figuring out and some of this is not strictly speaking legal so basically i have this assembly here and it's basically a two-step of some slopes here to create that basic angle that we see on the underside and then there's some panels up here with some different clips and cheese slopes basically there's just a little piece here and i have some technic pins stuck underneath which is one of the kind of stress or illegal techniques. Basically, when I attach this down, it puts a little bit of stress on the panels. It's not going to damage the parts or anything like that, but it does put a little bit of stress, so I do want to preface that. And then in this clip here, if I put a one by one plate and a one by one stud stacked, it has an angle that is going to be used to attach some of these wedge plates onto another illegal part of the build. If you take a wedge plate like this, it actually kind of fits onto a clip here. So if you just take the front stud and just push it on to the clip, it has enough tension to just hold it on like that. So you just put it in and it is pretty fragile, but it stays in place in the parameters of the build that I needed. And this was really challenging to figure out just because of how small of a section this is and also because I needed the top to be flat so that it could act as the platform. So with all of those parameters, this was the best thing that I could come up with. And then if you take the cut 2x4 wedge plates and then just go ahead and attach those onto the studs like so, then you are left with the angle that you see in the show. And in reality, this would actually come all the way to the front of the platform, but I extended it out so there's more space 
for the characters to stand, but the angle is there and I'm very, very happy with that. So as I said, it is a little bit fragile, but it gets the job done. So then this just goes ahead and attaches onto the mountain like so. And it fits in perfectly. I kind of traced it out on the right side with that wedge plate. And on the left side, I just built up a little rock structure. I'm really, really happy with this. This is definitely a small aspect of the mock, but it was something that I wanted to get right. And I'm really happy that I did. The actual door assembly is very complicated. I came up with a lot of different techniques to achieve the look that I was going for. The basic structure is just formed with regular bricks. And on the sides, I have some slopes and inverted slopes forming that kind of inset bunker feel. And then in the middle, I have some trans red plates and bricks acting as the ray shield. Originally, I wanted to have the ray shield be removable, but there was just no way to do that because I wanted to have lights built into it. And for this design, it is very, very in depth. I'll try and find some screenshots to show what I'm talking about. But as you can see, the outside shape is that kind of sloped trim that goes around both sides. So that was kind of the first thing that I wanted to tackle. And basically what I did was I just added in some of these snot bricks on the sides. And then I built these little assemblies that just snap on to either side. And then it forms that shape where you got that kind of outwards angle and then it goes straight up and then cuts back in. And in the final design, these little pieces here are going to be light bluish gray. I just don't have any currently, so ignore that. But then the next part is the kind of trim going around the door. I wanted to use tiles originally because of how thin it is, but I felt that the anti-studs on the underside of the tiles would just take away from the final look. So I opted for using these just stacked one by one bricks. And this worked out nicely just because I could add in the connection point right in and everything would just be seamless. So basically the way that this attaches is there's a Technic hole stud right here in that brick and I have a snot brick right here. So then you just kind of snap it in to place. And then at the top, there are some kind of floodlights. So I added those in with the trans light blue round tile and then I do have a light that is kind of sitting in here. And then came the roof section. And originally I was going to just do this with plates because that makes the most sense, but I didn't want the anti-studs again. So I came up with this little assembly here. This is just a bunch of plates and tiles stacked. And then in the middle, I threw in some jumper plates so that when this attaches onto the brackets, like so, if you look down here, there is that kind of trim going across the top of the door. It actually meets up perfectly flush. So I'm really, really happy with how that came out. And then at this point, I had my main door structure. So what I needed to do was the top section. And this gave me a lot of trouble. I wanted to have the angles kind of there represented. And it was just a bunch of weird stuff to figure out. But what I ended up landing on was using some bricks with the studs on the side to add on all these tiles here to the front. And like before, I added in some of those floodlights on the sides that we see. In the actual show, there's a big one right in the center, but I felt that that would kind of take away from the vent on top. It would just kind of drown it out and it would have just been a pain to figure out how to hide the wiring and everything. So I came up with this assembly here and then on the top and back, there are some cheese slopes and plates but these just snap on to those before mentioned hinge bricks. And that gives that kind of outwards slanting angle that we see in the show. I came up with this top section. This is actually fairly simple, but coming up with it and getting there was a little bit more tricky. Basically what I did was I just laid a ton of these headlight bricks with a plate and then more of those cheese slopes and this little assembly that just fits right in perfectly onto the back so that they're not being pinched like so, and then just snap it down. This actually meets up perfectly with the top and the front side, 
which is super satisfying. I was so pleased with that. There are some gaps here on the side here, but I was able to fix those and cover them up with the mountain that kind of goes around this whole section. So I am really, really happy with this. So then this whole section just kind of slides right in here and I added in some snot pieces in the back so I can just snap it down like so. And that is the basic structure for the door. The only thing left was I wanted to have the grate that Ahsoka crawls through and I found this piece in my collection. I believe this is a sticker from one of the more recent ATSD sets but this is actually the perfect size and shape for what I was going for. So I was really, really happy when I found this and I just made this little assembly that goes around it. So if I just take these little dark gray sections that I built and snap those onto the top of the doorway on either side, and then take a two by three light bluish gray tile. And then I take this mountain section that I pre-built and it just kind of hugs around everything nicely and covers up all of those gaps that I mentioned earlier. That just slides back in here. So now I can take my little assembly that I made for the grate and it just fits perfectly in that three stud wide gap. And if I put a tile on top of it, it fills it out perfectly. I will figure out how to attach the tile and the actual grate in the future. But for now, I'm not sure exactly how I want to do the top section of the rock. So I'm gonna leave that until I get to that point later on. And then coming around to the back, the only thing left was to add on this last little piece here. This is actually the light that shines up underneath into the ray shield from the bottom. So I have a light shining down from the top and then also one shining up from the bottom. So then this just kind of fits right in here and snaps on so that now when I turn on the light, I have a light shining up and also down. While we're back here, we can take a look at how many lights have gone into this mock. So just taking a look at all of those red wires, it probably doesn't even look as bad on camera as it really is in person. There are probably, I wanna say like 30 LED bulbs in just this one section alone, and then even more going into the full lava section. It goes all the way down. So there's a lot of lights that go into this mock. Unbelievably, I am actually starting to run low on lights, but that is mostly because of this section right here. So as I mentioned at the beginning and end of every video, this series is sponsored by Light Mag Bricks. As you can see here, this is one of the battery boxes and all of these connection boards and flicker effects boards and all that are Light My Bricks products. So if you guys are interested in this kind of thing for your own creations, I highly recommend Light My Bricks. I've been using them for a while now and they have never let me down. So if you guys are interested, there's gonna be a card in the top right corner of the screen as well as a link in the description. So huge thank you to Light My Bricks for sponsoring the series and putting out amazing products. So at this point, the entire front section of the mock is done, aside for the top of the mountain, which as I mentioned, I'm going to leave until I start tackling the top landscape so I can figure out how I want to do the transition there. So at this point, I'm just gonna turn all the lights on and show you guys the entire front section of the mock, and I really think you guys are gonna like it. So I'll go ahead and start with the right side. And as you can see, I have the floodlights up here. I have those two little lights illuminated right at the top of the door. I have the ray shield lights going. I have all of the static lights in the middle of the electro mines. And then I have all the flashing lights for the lightning pieces. And I do want to note that the two at the bottom have some blue pieces in front of the lights and the three here at the top don't have anything which is why there's a little bit of a disparity in the color as well as the brightness. So I'm going to get some trans purple so that instead of the blue, it will be purple, which is obviously more accurate to the show. So then that whole thing will get cleared up there. At this point, I'm just gonna take the camera off the tripod and kind of go in close on some cool angles and little bits here and there. But I am just so happy with how this came out. From the idea that I had months ago, 
to the sketches that I drew up, and then to the implementation of those ideas in the lava, and in the mountain, and the citadel tower, and the integration into the mountain, and all that stuff, and then finally now into the right section with the mines and that platform and entry door into the base. I'm just so happy with how this is all coming out. And pulling back, I am really happy also with the separation. I mentioned this before, how I wanted to have the citadel tower slid over to the left and then the entrance to the base over all the way to the right to just create some separation between them because obviously the citadel tower is way underscaled to a minifigure. So the more separation I could put between the minifigures and the citadel tower would just really sell the size of it better. So that I'm really happy with. And just looking at it in the same frame, your eyes are going to either focus on the right side or the left side. But either way, it just really helps to have that separation. And I'm just so happy with how this mock is turning out. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up episode six for the Citadel building series. I'm so happy with all of the progress that I made and the way that everything looks. It's all falling into place exactly the way that I envisioned, and I'm just really pleased with everything so far. And now I'm that much more energized to continue building this mock and make more progress for you guys to see in the next video. I'm going to try to post every two weeks. That was my goal when I started the series, and unfortunately this time was a little bit longer, but I hope that the longer video with more progress made up for that. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me through all of this, and thank you to Daniel and Jay again for supporting me, and all of you guys that watch my videos, I'm incredibly thankful. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.